Hello, you're watching a video of my electric conversion of a 2005 Royal Enfield Bullet 500. I'm going to go through all the components that are installed on the bike now. I've got everything on there necessary to make the wheels turn, so I'm hoping to get a test ride pretty soon. First up front where the motor used to be, I've got the batteries. Those are 11 Nissan Leaf battery modules stacked in 6 over 5. And those are sitting on the uh, 3 8 inch aluminum plate uh, frame completer that I built. Uh, it's got a left and right plate, and in between those plates, both on the bottom and top arms, I've got a rectangular tube aluminum bolted in there to give it extra strength and rigidity, take out any flex that might have been in the system. The batteries are also, as you can see, sandwiched in between shelves that are made from 1 8 inch aluminum. Those shelves are water jet cut, and they've got tabs that were uh, hand bent in order to uh, mount it to the uh, frame. And so there's no welding required at all for this installation. The three bottom shelves bolt right into that frame completer, and then the top shelf bolts into the uh, section of the down tube right here, and the bottom one bolts into the aft bolt that holds the tank on. Uh, the tank is uh, cut open on the bottom and empty, but I haven't needed to put any components in there so far, so uh, it's just an empty shell right now. You've got the AXC controller mounted underneath the seat, and you've got the motor mounted with four bolts on the left plate. That's all you need to mount the motor properly. Uh, there's a 13 tooth front sprocket going back to a 50 tooth rear sprocket. That gears it down uh, at a ratio of about 3.8, which I think will be sufficient. In the left toolbox, there's not much there, only the data logger for the cycle analyst. That has a little micro SD card that'll record all the data produced by the cycle analyst. Uh, the cycle analyst itself sits on the handlebars and that tells me how fast I'm going and how much power I'm using and all the things that I need to know while I'm riding. And the data logger allows me to take that back to the computer and do more analysis if I want to. Inside the left pannier I've got the charger and integrated into the charger is a DC-DC converter so when the uh, motorcycle is sitting still and charging uh, this lid stays up and I've also got a grating built into the bottom of the pannier so that I can get some vertical airflow and keep that um, charger as cool as possible because it will heat up while charging. When I'm riding, of course, the pannier will be closed, but the charger won't be operating, only the DC-DC converter. So I'm hoping that won't cause too much of a heating problem while riding. The right side looks much like the left, except that you'll notice the right plate goes around the motor. That's not necessary to... Uh, brace the motor on the right side at all. It's a shape and size and weight that can be mounted only with those four bolts. And in the right toolbox you'll see the other electrical components. You've got the contactor there, a main fuse, a smaller fuse with a diode right after that, and you've got a 12 volt relay which allows me to turn the 12 volt signal from the handlebar switches uh, into a pack voltage signal to turn on and off the contactor properly. In the aft part, I have a shunt resistor, which the cycle analyst needs to estimate how much current I'm using uh, for its data taking. And that is about it. There really isn't much to the design. And uh, I've got a lot of work to do, of course. Um, need to put a chain guard on and put some type of covers on those battery terminals to make them a little more weatherproof and people-proof. And i uh, got to paint the frame, get all the 12-volt items. Uh, working properly, but I've got something that uh, will spin the wheel and I'm hoping to take it for a test drive very soon. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Bye.